Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you how to use the Blender's NLA editor and how to use this powerful feature to speed up your animation workflow, copy and paste your animations, blend them together and do other stuff with it as well. So let's jump right in. So right here, as you can see, I have two of my animations. I have the walk cycle right here and I have the run cycle over here. And by the way, I'm using the BPS Rig version 4. The link will be in the description. And I have tutorials about those. So if you don't know how to make them, you can check out the description. But if you're too lazy to follow along, then you can join my Patreon and download those animations from there. So the way we can do that, use the NLA editor, is we're going to need to open the action editor. And then we're also going to need to open a new tab as well. But before we jump into the NLA editor, let's cover one thing. So if you have your animation right here, my character is walking. And as you can see on frame 32, he stops. If I want my animation to go on forever, I can obviously copy and paste this like I showed you in my previous tutorials. But an easier method to do so is, first of all, select your character. Then click on Control Tab to go to Pose Mode. Press on A to select all of the bones. Then Shift Left Click to deselect the root bone because we're only going to need everything other than the root bone. Now go down on the graph editor and then press on control tab. So if you press on control tab, you can switch from timeline to graph editor pretty easily. Now, once I did that, I'm gonna press on A to select all of my keyframes inside the graph editor, then press on shift E and then click on make cyclic. If I click on make cyclic, this is gonna create the cycles modifier. And what cycles modifier does is basically it's gonna make your animation go on forever. So if I move my cursor past my end frame, you can see my character is still going to be walking and he's going to be walking forever. And the great thing about this is that if I make any changes in the beginning, for example, I have my character's head to be right here, probably press the I to the keyframe, it's going to confirm this movement and it's going to do, the, do it for the entire animation. So using the cycles modifier is very powerful, but if you want to blend your animations, for example, my character starts walking over here, then I want my character to start running, then maybe do a jump and roll in between or do other stuff. Then I can do this using the NLA editor pretty, pretty easily. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the timeline, maybe expand this timeline down, and then I'm going to go over this corner until I see this cursor, left click and drag, and then switch this view from 3D view to the dope sheet. So I'm going to click on dope sheet. And then after I'm in the dope sheet, I'm going to switch this from the dope sheet to the action editor. So make sure you're in the action editor right here. I'm going to create a new window as well, but don't worry, you don't have to create all of these windows while you're working. I'm just creating them to show you how it's done, basically. So I'm going to create a new window over here, left click and drag this up, and then switch this from the 3D view into the non-linear animation editor. So this is the non-linear animation, which we're going to be covering in this tutorial. And the first thing you're, you're going to notice is while you check your action editor, you can see we have this BPS character rig 001 action. What this means is that when I'm, whenever I'm setting a keyframe for an object or a character, it creates a brand new action over here. So if I click this, you can see I have this BPS Rig 001 action and I have this and then plane and sun action. I don't think you're going to have these because I have plane and sun action and I deleted them previously before I started this tutorial. If I select this character, he also has his own action. So first thing I highly, highly recommend is you name your actions because if you name your actions, you're going to be way more organized in the future. And if you want to copy and paste those animations onto your other characters, you can locate them pretty easily. So I'm going to select the walking character, the character who's walking. I'm going to go inside the action editor left click this and then name this something like walk cycles or walk cycle select the second character and name this run cycle and then if i expand this menu you can see i have your walk cycle and run cycle actions over here now i have other actions here so i have plane action and i have sun action over here and you're not going to have these but i'm going to explain this thing right here so if the action has zero next to it it means that if i turn off blender and i turn it on the turn the scene on again I'm going to lose this action. So you got to be careful about that. And the reason this action have zero is because I deleted those objects. I deleted the sun action and I deleted the plane action as well. So if you create a run cycle action and you delete the character, make sure you click on this icon. So if you click on fake user, this is going to save your action and it's not going to have the zero around it. So run cycle and walk cycle are already safe because we have the objects created. So you don't have to press on this fake user. And we are back. The power just went out and my PC is shut down. But anyway, I was explaining about the fake user. So make sure if you want to be safe and save your action, then click on the shield icon and create the fake user for both of these actions. And now let's go back towards my walking character. And if I want my character to start walking and control on how many frames I want the character to be walking, I can select my character. And then you don't have to go inside the pose mode. So if I select my run cycle, I'm going to have the run cycle and all of the keyframes selected over here. If I click on this, I'm going to select all of these keyframes here. Now, after I have my walk cycle selected, 
uh, I highly recommend you go inside the NLA editor and then click on the show only selected so that it's only going to show the selected strips and you can do the same here on the action editor as well so that your action is going to be more clean. Now if I go inside my pose node, I'm going to press on control tab. Now I'm going to press on A to select all the keyframes and then make sure you don't have any keyframes on your root wall. In this case, I don't have any keyframes on my root wall. But if you do, you can just shift and then deselect the root bone because we don't want to create any actions for the root bone just now. We're going to do this a bit later. So after I have all of my characters keyframes selected, I'm going to press on this icon over here. I'm going to go inside the NLA editor and then next to the walk cycle, I'm going to click on this icon, which is push down action. And if I click on this, this is going to create a brand new strip. I can also go down the action editor and click on push down and it's going to do the same thing over here. And now I have created a new strip for my walk cycle. And what this does is basically you, it gives you a lot of control over how your animation is going to look and when you want to start the animation and how long you want the animation to go on. And you can think of this track as a video editing track. If you're familiar with video editing, you know how this track works. You can place the tracks on top of this, on the bottom of this, blend different tracks together. So we're going to be doing that with this animation as well. So make sure you have your action selected first of all. If you have it selected, it's going to be orange. And if you don't see the side menu, you're going to press on N and then it's going to pop out right here. So there might be many settings and you might be intimidated, but don't worry about them. All you need to do is scroll down and then expand this action clip menu. So if I expand the action clip, I have a lot of control over it. So if I press on repeat over here, so you see we have the repeat option. If I left click and drag this up and then I scroll out over here, you can see my action just expanded. And if I use my cursor to play the animation, you can see it goes on as long as I want. So it basically copies the animation and pastes this as long as I want. So if I increase the action, if I increase the repeat, it's going to go on like forever, as, as long as I want. Now I'm going to also go on frame 300 and maybe set the end frame to 300 as well, as why not? So before I move on with the other features of the end layer, and before we move on to blending animations, I want to show you a few things you can do with the strip. So first of all, I'm going to set the repeat to 2 because I want my walk to repeat 2 times only. And then you can use the same shortcuts that you use in other blender tabs. So for example, if I select this strip and if I press on S to scale this up, so S and then scale this up to something like, I don't know, frame 120, you can see that it's significantly going to slow down the animation. If I do the opposite, if I press on S and then scale this down, you can see it speeds up the animation. Also, if I press on G and then grab this and move this around to frame 50, for example, my animation is going to start at frame 50 and it's going to be slow as well because I scaled this up. But I can also press on Alt S so that it goes back to the default scale and I'm going to press on G and move this around to frame 0 once again. And I'm quickly going to hide the run cycle because we're not going to need it. Also, you can press on Y. So I go somewhere in the middle and press on Y and then this is going to separate your clips. So if I select the right one, I can move this here. If I select the left one, I can move this here. But I don't know why you would want to do that. But if you want to do that, you have this option. And now I want to show you how to mix and blend the animations together. So for example, I want my character to start running somewhere over here around frame 60. And I want my character to start seamlessly transitioning into the run cycle. So first of all, we don't have to be in the pause mode really. So I can just quick click on control tab and go back to the object mode. And what I can do is go around on frame, I don't know, 64 where the clip ends. And then make sure you have your action selected. So make sure you have the walk cycle selected. Now hover over here and press on shift A. So the same shortcuts like I told you works in the action editor as well. So shift A is create in Blender. And if I press on shift A, I have different actions over here. So that's why I recommended you to name the action because you can locate them easily. So I want the run cycle. I want to choose the run cycle. And if I left click this, it's going to create a new strip for the run cycle as well. And if I play, my character is walking and then starts running. But obviously it doesn't look good. It just starts running like straight away. So I want the seamless blend over here. So first of all, I'm going to select the run cycle and make this a bit longer. So I'm going to scroll down again, once again to the action clip and set the repeat to something like two. Or maybe four, I don't know, because my character wants to run longer. And then my character is going to be running for longer. Now, uh, the way I can blend these animations you know, is I want to take this and place this on top of the walk cycle. But if I press on G, as you can see, I cannot move this up. It only moves from side to side. So the way I can move this up I, is I should create a new layer over here. So hover over anywhere on the walk cycle and then press on Shift A. And then this is going to create a new track over here. So if I press on G, select the run cycle and press on G, I can move this up and down. So I want to move this up, press on G, and then maybe move this on the left side as well so that we can blend the animation seamlessly together. But as you, as you noticed, as soon as I move the run cycle up, uh, my character is only running and before that my character is doing nothing. And this is because of the default interpolation. So the default interpolation under the active strip, which is the first tab over here, you can see the extrapolation is set to hold. 
And it, this is basically telling Blender to hold uh, whatever animation is before that. So it's basically telling Blender to hold the walk cycle and don't do anything. But if I select this and set this to nothing, my character is still going to be walking and then my character is going to be running. So if I want to seamlessly blend my animation, I'm going to mess around with the blend in and blend out. So if I mess around with the blend in setting, you can see what happens right here. I get this over here. I get this transition. Uh, and this line basically tells me that it's a fade in effect, like a fade in fade out effect. And now if I play my animation again, you can see it's more seamless, it transitions more smoothly, and it's not as fast as it was before. And I can do the same thing for the walk cycle as well. So select the walk cycle and then choose blend out, left click and drag this, and you can see I get this effect as well. And if I blend in both of these settings, it's going to be more seamless and it's going to look way better. But if you don't want to mess around with these settings manually, you can select any of the tracks or select one cycle and then press an auto blend over here and select the walk cycle and press an auto blend as well. And this is going to blend in wherever you move the action. So if I move this way back, you can see it's going to blend in properly. If I move this forward, it's going to blend it properly as well. So you can enable auto blend for both of these uh, settings as well, for both of these actions. And now if you want to clean this up, I want to take a look at my animation. So for example, my character, when my character starts running, his right leg moves forward first. So I want my character to transition into run cycle while his right leg is up during the walk cycle. So right here, as you can see, my character is running. And we have the right leg up over here. So I want my characters to start running somewhere over here. So I'm going to select this clip, left click and drag, or you can also press on G and then drag this until you get something like this. So for example, my character lifts up the right leg and then starts running straight away. Maybe move this forward a bit. And as you can see, the action is more seamless. And now if I play my animation, you can see the action is more seamless. My character walks and then my character starts running. And this is a very, very powerful feature. As, uh, obviously, I can make this run cycle as long as I want. But if I want my character to, again, transition to walking, I can select this. And then, as I told you, same shortcuts work here. So, again, I can press on Shift D. And then Shift D is duplicated in Blender. And as you can see, I just created a new track. So, I'm going to move this somewhere at the end. Left click. And then, since I have the Auto Blend enabled, since I enabled the Auto Blend option for both of these tracks, you can see it already blended in. It's already blended in and blended out these options. So if I play my animation again, as you can see, my character walks, then runs, and then transitions into walking again. And obviously I can clean up this walking as well. So my character has the right leg up, and I want my character to start with the right leg up as well while he's walking. So maybe somewhere over here could be proper. And as you can see, this is really, really powerful feature. Like NLA Editor is honestly amazing. It allows you to work on animations in layered approach, and you can do a lot more stuff with this. I'm just showing you basics, and you can go crazy with it, and you can do any animations you want. I can obviously hide this run cycle because I don't really need it. I needed this run cycle just to show you to demonstrate you that you have this action over here and then you can insert the action over here as well. And now my character has the walk cycle, run cycle and walk cycle animations. But the only problem is, as you can see, my character is in, in the place and he's not going anywhere. But you know where you should be going? You should be going on my Patreon. Because for only $1 a month, you can get some of the Blender files from my tutorials, like these walk cycles and run cycles, also some water shaders, moving fog, and you can get a lot more stuff in the Patreon as well. And also, you, you will be supporting the channel. And now we can animate the root one to move the character forward. So go down on the timeline, make sure you enable auto keyframing, go to king and enable location and rotation. And then on frame zero, I'm gonna select the root one and press on I to set a keyframe for it. Now I'm gonna go forward somewhere in the middle between walk cycle and run cycle and then press on G and then move this forward. Or you can press on GY and move this forward to like two units, for example. And then also make sure you set your keyframe interpolation to linear because this is Bezier. So I'm going to press on A, press on T, uh, over, hover over the timeline, press on A, make sure you select all of your keyframes, press on T, and then set this to linear so that it's going to be more linear and we mainly need the linear motion for the root mode. And right here, after my character starts running, I'm going to go towards the end of the run cycle, which is like frame 124 or 125. And then I'm going to move the root bone like further because my character is running and it's going to, he's going to cover more distance. So I'm going to press on GY, move this somewhere over here. And then since we made this linear, it's already going to be linear. Now if I play, you can see what happens. My character moves forward, then starts running and the is going to cover more distance. But I don't think that's enough distance, so I can move this forward as well, even more. So you can see what happens. And after the character starts walking, I can make the action more slower and I can make the character cover less distance. So maybe G, Y, then move this forward. 
And as you can see, it's pretty, pretty easy to do. You don't have to do manually like shift D, copy the keyframes, guess where to get a place the keyframes. You can do everything using the NLA editor and you can see how amazing this option is. So I just blended the animations really seamlessly in a few minutes. And if you're working on a large animation, you can do a lot of stuff with the NLA editor and it's honestly, honestly amazing. And one thing we forgot is to set the name over here. So my name is something like root underscore action so that you are more organized as well. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video. As you can see, the NLA editor is very, very amazing and you can do a lot of stuff with this. And once again, I have tutorials about the run cycles and walk cycles. But if you're too lazy to do them, you can also join my Patreon for only $1 a month and you can support the channel. And you can also download a lot of Blender files as well. But if you want to learn how to make the walk cycle from scratch, from start to finish, then you can check out this video right here. And I will see you there. Thank you for watching.